The data file utility or DFU is a part of the application development toolset for AS400 that can be used to create programs to update or display records in a particular database file. We can use the strdfu command from any command line to access the AS400 data file utility menu. Pressing the enter key takes us to the main AS400 DFU screen where you have options that allow you to run, create, change or delete a DFU program and also to update data using a temporary DFU program. Select option 2 to create a DFU program and press the enter key. The create a DFU program display appears. Enter CST PGM in the program prompt and mylib for the library prompts. Move the cursor to the data file prompt and press the F4 key to select the database file. The select file display appears with a list of the database files in the mylib library. Select the cuspf file by entering a 1 in the option column against the file and press the enter key. This brings us to the create a DFU program display. The selected file cuspf is displayed in the data file prompt. On pressing the enter key, the defined general information non-indexed file display appears. Here there are a number of options we can specify. On the job title option, we can specify a name that will appear on the upper left corner of the screen and on audit reports. The default is the program name. On the display format option, we can specify how the fields are arranged on the display screen. We specify a value of 1 for the fields to be arranged in a single column or 2 for multiple columns. With option 3, DFU places as many fields as possible on a single screen and with option 4, the fields are arranged in rows across the screen with column headers above each field. On the audit report option, we can specify whether an audit report is to be generated or not. The audit report list changes, adds and deletes to a database file. The processing option indicates how new records will be added to the file. Enter a job title. Specify 1 for display format and Y for audit report. Pressing the enter key will take us to the define audit control screen. Here we can make any changes if required or leave the defaults as they are. Pressing the enter key will take us to the work with record formats display. Enter 2 in the option column against the CUS FMT format and press the enter key. This brings us to the select and sequence fields display. Here we assign sequence numbers to the fields we want to include on the display. Number them in the order in which you want them to appear on the screen. Alternatively, we can also use the F21 function key to select all the fields. Pressing the enter key will bring up the screen you see here. A message appears at the bottom of the screen asking for confirmation. If we do not want to specify any special features such as auto duplicating fields, we can press the F17 key for fast path. This will take us directly to the exit DFU screen and default values will be taken for field definitions. Press the enter key to specify extended field definitions. This brings us to the work with fields display. We use option 2 to specify an extended definition for a field and option 4 for deleting the extended definition. 
the extended definition column tells us whether an active definition exists or not. Under heading we can specify a title for the field that will appear on the DFU change display screen. Let us enter option 2 against CAS ID field. On pressing the enter key the specify extended definition display appears. This display is slightly different for character and numeric fields. For numeric fields you have the accumulate and auto increment options. The accumulate option provides running totals and final totals of changes, additions and deletions to the field. The auto increment option is used to specify a fixed value by which the field is to be incremented. This not only reduces the amount of data entry but also reduces the probability of errors. The auto duplicate option if selected allows us to copy the value of a previous records field into the current records field by pressing the F22 key. The validity checks option allows us to specify validity checking for a field. Press page down to go to the second page of the display. Here you can specify whether the field is to begin on a new line, whether the field exit key should be used to move from this field, whether the field is to be output only, that is, it should not be changed. The non-display option can be used to hide a field on the display. You can also specify the spacing to be used and also any edit quotes and edit words that you want to use. Press the page up key to go back to the first page. Type in the extended field heading prompt as customer ID. Specify 1 in the auto increment prompt to have the customer IDs incremented by 1 for each new customer when you are in the entry or insert mode. Type 2 for change against the validity checks option. This will take us to the specify validity checks screen where we can specify various validity checks such as mandatory fill that requires all positions of a field to be entered and mandatory entry that requires a value to be entered for this field. You can also compare the contents of the field against a single value using one of the relational operators. On pressing the enter key the work with fields display appears. Let us now see how to specify extended definitions for an alphanumeric field. Enter option 2 against the name field to specify the extended definitions for this field. Here we have the allow lowercase option which has a default value of n. Also as you may have noticed there is no auto increment option for numeric fields. After defining the field we press the enter key to return to the work with fields display. After we have finished defining all the fields, press the enter key from the work with fields display. This brings us to the exit DFU program definition screen. Here we have various options. Specify Y to save your work. Specify Y to run the program if you want to update the file right away. Specify 1 or 2 for the type of run. A value of 1 allows updates, deletions and additions to be made to the file. A value of 2 allows display only. If you are modifying an existing DFU, the modify program option should be set to Y. If you plan to use the DDS source, you can save it by specifying Y for the save DDS source option. On pressing the enter key, the DFU program gets saved and the change a data file display screen appears. Press the enter key to accept the defaults. 
This will bring up the DFU work screen. To add new records, press the F10 key. This brings up the data entry screen where we can enter data for the fields. On pressing the enter key, DFU adds the record to the CUSP PF data file and clears the display so that you can continue adding records. You add the details of a new customer. On pressing the enter key, an error message, valid range for the field 10000 and 99999 is displayed because you had given a validity check for the customer ID that the range of customer ID should be between 10000 and 99999. Press the F3 key to exit the data entry session. Here you have a report of the number of records that have been added, deleted and changed. On pressing the enter key, the display batch accumulators screen appears. On pressing the enter key, the AS400 data file utility menu appears. Select option 3 to change a DFU program. This brings us to the change a DFU program display where you can change the program name and the data file. From the AS400 data file utility menu, we can select option 1 to run a DFU program. On pressing the enter key, the run a DFU program display appears. Specify option 1 to change a data file. On pressing the enter key, the change a data file display appears. Here we specify the name of the program as well as the database file. Pressing the enter key will take us to the DFU work screen. To modify an existing record, type in an existing customer ID and press the field exit key followed by the enter key. The record will be displayed. Make the changes and press the enter key. The modified record is processed and the display is cleared. To modify another record, type in the new customer ID and follow the same procedure as before. Alternatively, you can also specify the relative record number of the record you want to modify. Press the F3 exit key when you are through with modifying the records. The end date entry screen is displayed. Press the enter key to return to the AS400 data file utility menu. Select option 4 to delete a DFU program on the AS400 data file utility menu. On pressing the enter key, the delete a DFU program display appears. Move your cursor to the program prompt and type CST PGM program in the MyLib library. On pressing the enter key, the confirm delete of DFU programs display appears with the program selected for deletion. Press the enter key and the delete a DFU program display will appear with the message that the CST PGM DFU program has been deleted. On pressing the F3 key, the AS400 DFU menu appears. Enter option 5 to update data using temporary program and press the enter key. The update data using temporary program is displayed that allows you to specify the names of the data file library and member. On pressing the enter key, DFU will create a temporary program for you. The message, DFU is creating a temporary program for you to run, is displayed. Next, the work with data in a file display is shown. Press F10 to switch to the entry mode. 
enter some values for the fields. On pressing the F3 key to exit, the end data entry display appears. Press enter to end the session. This brings us back to the AS400 data file utility menu. Summary In this chapter, we studied the data file utility that can be used to update and display records in a database file. DFU provides options to create DFU programs that can be used to update and display records in a database file. Run a DFU program once it has been created. Change an existing DFU program. Delete an existing DFU program and also to update data in a file using a temporary program that is automatically created by DFU using the descriptions of the database file which we specify.